Hello and welcome back. Today we are continuing our Brazil run. Last episode was a bit of a pop-off. We tripled construction. We also passed a whole bunch of laws, one very important which being uh, property women, which allows uh, us to get a whole bunch of juice on the Magnanimous Monarch journal entry. We are trying to pass laws, make sure we don't rev this sort of thing. We have to stay 50% plus in order to close out this journal entry, which hopefully we will be doing today um, by making Isabella sit on the throne. And so Pedro has to die, and so our plan is to abdicate to our daughter because everyone knows every loving father wants to put his princess on the throne uh unfortunately the only way to abdicate is to die everyone knows when you abdicate you just uh see your way out you decide to go home you go home and so uh this is what we will be doing today we will be hopefully getting um, dear isabella on the throne we can't abdicate until she's at least 18 also last episode we subjugated all of south america all of these guys are our subjects and so we will be looking for spots to reduce autonomy but we cannot afford to do a diplomatic play because we are in russia's customs union because of this, look at that, it's all green. Because of this, uh, Russia sees our subjects as their subjects, and if we declare war on one of their, you know, subjects, or one of their customs union member, at least how they see it, uh, they will join against us, even though this will auto-kick us and almost all of these, or yeah, and all of our subjects out of the customs union, and they still uh, will intervene, and so this is why we will not be reducing autonomy, unless we have a really good chance of, uh, you know, getting it done without... Uh, uh, them uh, without them resisting. So this 30% needs to be considerably higher. This is notably why we are improving relations with all of our subjects. And so without further ado, let's be off on our way. We took a little bit of time to declare a bunch of rivalries. We have a bunch of opportunities to do so because we're a major power, which is going to give us a bunch of influence. And rather than, you know, bankrolling or doing this sort of thing, because we don't have our own customs union, we're just going to float this and get the nice, juicy plus 22% uh, infamy decay, which is going to allow us to, you know, uh, make progress out of this infamy a little bit faster, which is great for us. Um, you know, this 22% diplomatic uh, mitigation so that we will be able to, you know, reduce infamy in a variety of, or like so we will be able to declare more plays we want to make sure we do not annex anyone though uh in the near future because uh you know this negative condition of any revolution progress above 50 percent this applies to separatist movements and so we do not want to have a separatist movement and so we won't be annexing anyone we're just going to be reducing autonomy when these guys decide they know what's good for them this election, we do see the passing of the industrialists passing up of the conservative party, which is, you know, made of the landowners and the, you know, devout, as well as the armed forces. So we're expecting, you know, they only have like 27% clout, expecting when this, uh, you know, this election pops that this combined clout will decrease even more and there it is down to about 25 combined we have been suppressing them we will continue to do so it's a little bit tempting to decrease taxes a couple notches to be in the next bracket but since uh we can't uh get down to the next bracket too too easy or if we were at 65 we would decrease taxes two notches here since we're not at 65 we'll instead increase taxes we will take this con uh contested bracket and we will instead add construction or actually we will finish getting this to level 21. Generally, when I get around 200 construction, I, I'm not sure that this is, the, like, an objective sense the best thing to do or the best time to do it, but this is when usually go for the 21-level university, which will really help out with the tech quite a bit. Universities benefit a lot from economies of scale. The throughput increases the input goods and the outputs. It doesn't increase wages. Wages are a majority of the cost of these buildings, and so by doing this, uh, you know, you can really gain kind of a lot of innovation or extra um, and we have dialectics also coming up, which was the very much the plan, uh, which will unlock another uh, level of in max education investment. Oh, I thought mm, I thought dialectics was the one that gave us. Oh yeah, it also unlocks philosophy department. There we go. So this is why we are researching dialectics, knowing that we are you know branching out into kind of uh, pushing the universities. This will help quite a bit and we're kind of uh, a little bit poised to increase our education institution. I think we have some no, we don't have any in the queue. Well, we will add some bureaucratic administrations into the queue uh, so that we can, you know, we're going to push the economies of scale on these a little bit too, uh, but we'll add those into the queue so that right away when we get the tech, we can hopefully increase education up to the next level. It is Isabella's or Isabel's uh, 18th birthday tomorrow. And for her 18th birthday, she's going to get a throne. So we're going to pass. Hey, she's 18. Look at her. She just 
grew up, the look of that glow up one day. And so she's 18 years old, so now she is, we are eligible to step down. We will, of course, um, try and pass, let's see, hmm, not that, not that, not that. We'll try and pass theocracy. Oh no, the intelligentsia, they're so mad at us. Oh no, minus 11, oh jeez, oh no. Okay, I guess we're gonna step down now. Hmm, oh, I guess we gotta wait a tick. Let's let that tick. Oh no, we have to, we just have to step down. We made the intelligentsia too mad. Okay, abdicate. We will abdicate and we will get outraged by political events disfavoring the intelligentsia in Brazil. Emperor Pedro has decided to abdicate the throne to his heir, Princess Isabel de Braganca. Braganca? I don't even know how to pronounce that. I apologize to all the Brazilians in chat. Uh, but we will be getting uh, aristocrats becoming more loyalist or pops becoming more loyalist. Let's go with the let's go with the pops. She's a she's a woman of the people, and she's the new em empress, which should will complete magnanimous monarch. So let's unpause. We get the achievement magnanimous. We will, of course, screenshot that. Uh, the Emperor is dead. Long live the Empress. Interest groups will be more likely to choose progressive leaders in the future. 10% of the Pops become loyalists. 10% of Afro-Brazilian Pops become loyalists. She becomes popular monarch for five years, plus 50 popularity. And her ideology changes to the very unique, enlightened royalist, which is going to favor monarchy, multiculturalism. And the multiculturalism is the big one. We will, of course, uh, not actually pass theocracy. The entire point of that was just to get uh, them off our back, or sorry, rather, to piss off the intelligentsia enough that we actually could abdicate. Man, that looks so nice. Enlightened royalist, big nice. And so uh, we will be well on our ways. Unfortunately, we were just kind of paused to double check to make sure that we couldn't make her a general because we would have wanted to make her a general before she ascended to the throne. Can't make her a general, sexist type stuff. Uh, but she is the popular monarch. And so we will be continuing on as Isabel. We get one of our first mass migrations coming in from Germany. Also, we did research Quinine here, uh, which is going to be pretty good for us. We're going to establish a couple new colonies. These ones are going to progress relatively slowly, but now, now we can do uh, a whole bunch of ones in the Micronesia, Oceania area, which is going to give us a native interest here once they complete, which shouldn't take too long. We're just going to do all the Oceania ones, and we are going to leave uh, Papua New Guinea alone for now. Uh, and then we will take a look at the tax and maybe what we're going to do. Um, and then we'll talk about Isabella a little bit. Um, I think that we start, we want to start getting into either the tier three of the, we either want to go for, you know, steel frame construction in the near future, or we want to go for a tier three over here in the near future. And pre in either case, sort of prep it for ourselves. I think that the tier threes here uh, are not hyper, hyper attractive for us other than rubber mastication into, rubber mastication into, uh, into, vulcanization but since this is a two in a row i think that we're going to go for a kind of maybe our first uh man steel frame is really really good but maybe maybe we just go labor movement here to try and demarginalize the trade unions we're not super super far off and this is going to help out quite a bit uh because there's a hidden modifier i forget exactly what it is but um what exactly the modifier is but generally you need both labor movement and egalitarianism to demarginalize them but i think after that we're going to come from mechanized workshop with the idea being that we are going to after we research mechanized workshop this will have natural spread to us we are going to ahead of time push for vulcanization so that we can get machine steel to Tools, which is going to allow us to really make super good use of rubber as well as maybe export steel uh, tools. Uh, right now our economy is pretty wood heavy. We are just exporting wood and uh, hardwood and softwood, both of them as best we can and we are producing a ton of wood. This is what we have a lot of. We have a company for it. Uh, we can construct it pretty quick and we can overcome you know, uh, our construction malice here. We can overcome these types of construction malices by building a lot of wood and so this is going to be pretty nice. Also. Unfortunately, I do not know a way exactly. Uh, perhaps if we get rid of every single one of our generals and then we exile the intelligentsia leader, this will make uh, Isabel uh, the leader of the IG. But we need to figure out a way to get make her leader of the IG. And I don't off the top of my head know. And I'm not exactly sure how we can do this. We want enlightened royalists so that we can pass stuff. This is the entire point. Uh, but we can't do this unless she's going to be the leader of the IG. And so I think that maybe if we only have her 
uh, or if we have zero generals uh, that can be substituted in, so for example, we are going to have to get rid of this reformer guy, or zero generals with a uh, positive po popularity, then maybe exiling uh, will put her in charge of the IG, which is very much so what we want. So with our level 21 uni, we are getting a ton of innovation. In fact, we are actually over the cap, except the cap is really not a cap at all. Uh, we will be getting 104 on our direct research, which we are currently using, uh, you know, on labor movement. However, you get additional overflow at 60% total of your the innovation you're overflowing will end up going towards your natural spread. We will get a little bit less because that censorship modifier, uh, but you see that plus six from unspent innovation, that that is a number that is applying to each category. And so we are going to be natural spreading stuff a little bit faster as well. We're not gonna super push the universities because we don't have the economy for this, uh, but it is very notable uh, and it's important to emphasize this is something a lot, a lot of players don't realize. Um, the cap isn't really a cap. Uh, it's the cap's not real, it can't hurt you. No, the caps, uh, instead we will be getting uh, this figure that overflows. 20% of that into each tech uh, you will be receiving uh, for the technology spread. So we will be getting psychiatry, for example, faster. We will be getting nitroglycerin faster off the back of this. And uh, of course, we are really valuing just building them tall in the capital for one. Uh, this capital has additional clout boost, and so you will gain additional clout in the capital, and we want the intelligentsia to be stronger. Uh, but also, too, the throughput is really, really strong because it's increasing, you know, the innovation by 20% but it's only increasing the paper input not the wages input by 20% here so we hit a little bit of a point where we will be able to take a nice little risk here um, we have cited on the side of the UK uh, it wouldn't play in the Congo so the UK cannot side against us Russia is fighting uh, Austria in this, uh, you know, war for German leadership. Uh, luckily, they are not against France, so I don't think we have to worry about our market getting completely bricked. If it does get bricked, we will, of course, leave the market. And so now this is a nice opportunity because I think we can declare on Chile. Uh, you know, Great Britain won't help them. Uh, the USA might help them. That's the only one. But I think we can make it out through the USA. Uh, you know, uh, Prussia is not going to help because they're in the middle of a war. And so so this seems like a really safe time, so we're going to go for reducing their autonomy. They might just accept anyways, but if they don't accept, um, we are in a good spot to be able to fight this. They accept demands. How anticlimactic. But um, this type of maneuvering is pretty useful. The UK will often be declaring wars somewhere, and so we can just side on their side, and then, you know, then they can't side against us, and this uh, gives us kind of free anti, uh, like, pie-thumbing armor, I suppose, in a sense. Yeah. This is not something we've really seen too much of before this patch, or at least not in several patches, which is Russia is getting into the colonization game in a whole bunch of spots. Um, this is not very ideal. Uh, and the reason that they are able to do this, or the reason that they have strategic interests in these regions, is because we are a subject of them, and we have territory in these regions, and so they've gotten it, and they've also passed, you know, a colonization means. So we are facilitating it by staying in their market. However, those sweet, sweet pops. But sometime down the road, we might have to try and uh i mean this is going to hurt our colonization game so we might have to try and make some sort of adjustments if we can i'm not really sure exactly where what it's going to look like but yeah this is uh a little bit of a cause for concern and also something that's interesting uh that we're getting it through let's see if we get no migration controls boom big nice there we have it uh that's not really that going to be that important for us except for the point of we are going to it's important for a journal entry uh, somewhere down the line and it was just kind of an easy pass right now and so uh we are kind of waiting on the trade unionists coming on up that way we can utilize them the industrialists are really really powerful we'd kind of rather the clout be with the liberal party um even though their bonuses are but um well i guess i mean decreases from standard uh minus radicals from standard living decreases is kind of okay to some extent but like overall the bonuses are not that good uh, but we want to pass some trade unionist laws and so we what we really want is we want to pass Isabel laws but we can't I think we can get her in power if we did a banana republic if I'm not mistaken on how this mechanics works we don't often go presidential republic so I might be, be mistaken and I'm not 100% but I think if we go presidential republic when we have no laws no uh, voting system like if we swapped back to oligarchy technocracy autocracy and then we went presidential republic I believe 
I believe uh, she might gain charge of the IG, which is really what we want. Um, but it's uh, it's rough. We d we tested it and exiling this guy with only her, uh, with no other generals that are in the intelligentsia and only her available does not make her IG leader. And I don't know exactly how we can make her IG leader. Uh, and so if she's literally the only person who can roll enlightened royalist, then this is actually just a huge shame and kind of like a waste of a slot in a sense. Like we did this art for nothing because if she cannot become leader of the IG, we can't really use her to pass anything. And so, yeah. So as part of hopefully getting the trade unions up after we research labor movement, we are going to be going for census suffrage. Um, notably, we did get a uh, an event that allowed us to put this Democrat in charge of the landowners, so landowners aren't going to rev, but they're really not too much to worry about anyways. We're also going to bolster the trade unions once we unlock the tech, and so the combination of the two should be, or the three things, bolstering, unlocking the tech, and switching the law system should really give us a good shot at demarginalizing them in fairly good order. They have really, really good bonuses. Ugh. So we, are, we can get a setback or we can get minus enactment time. That's a lot of enact, minus enactment chance. I don't think we want to roll with that. Uh, enactment time for forever. So we'll just take a setback here. Uh, but we will be coming on up and hopefully getting these guys just to take a quick look at their bonuses uh they get manufacturing industries throughput to 10 percent and also workforce ratio five percent and we need them to pass laws uh in particular we do want to go for uh you know not that uh we do want to go for proportional taxation and also uh now we can actually make a, a little bit of a bid at either commercialized agriculture or homesteading probably going to hold out for commercialized agriculture because we no longer have to avoid go uh, uh, getting off of tenant farmers as per the magnanimous monarch journal entry whom we have but we can't pass our ideology on to our interest group so we thought that we would uh try and annex peru bolivia while russia was still tied up in a war and uh we got ourselves into a little bit of a pickle because uh the usa siding against us i don't think is something we can overcome so what we are going to try and do is we can of course not sway uh russia because peru bolivia is the subject of russia but we, who we can try and sway is the uk and we can either transfer a subject we can transfer venezuela or argentina not particularly appealing or transfer states and they are kind of amenable to taking states uh, that are colonization uh, little states. Uh, I don't think, I think North Cameroon is going to be the least valuable here. We are, we're trying to incorporate it, but th th there's really not a whole lot here. It's not giving us another front somewhere else. And so I think giving them North Cameroon is probably okay uh, in exchange for trying to annex Peru Bolivia a little bit faster. Again, we want to try and annex these guys uh, because they are siphoning off Russian migrants, so they're only going to become more and more expensive to annex. They have a ton of stuff, they have a ton of gold, and they have good companies. And so all of this together really makes them a very strong annex, and so we will sway in uh, the UK here. Now, uh, having swayed them in, we do have a little bit of a decision whether or not we want to go for anything in the USA. We need to move obligations, or we need to move stuff if we want to, and we'll probably take a look at maybe taking California, or at least how much this costs, this sort of thing, because taking California is going to be uh, pretty nice if we can manage it, uh, but if we can just only annex Peru Bolivia, this is also pretty good for us. The problem is, is we don't really have the navy to land the usa unless they leave california unattended which they might um yeah I, i'm just not sure if we can get this in uh on them i think that yeah uh, if the uk had annexed one of these guys it would make it a lot easier but there's no front with the usa uh other than them coming to this peru bolivia front and so uh i'm not sure it's worth putting in on california but if it's only like five infamy or something we we'll maybe flick it in so the war is going okay but the uk is not really doing a whole lot to help and if they don't come with something substantive this isn't a uk army here this is a, a u.s army if they don't come with something substantive we're going to be looking at not so good shape although we do have this situation so maybe if we can occupy enough of the U.S. united states uh the united states will just capitulate and if the u.s capitulates then we will be able to push it in peru bolivia pretty quick but it uh peru bolivia they should be able to enforce on us unless they, or actually, in order to regime change Chile, they're going to need to take control of regime change Chile, actually. Oh, no, wait. Nope. They don't need to full occupy in order to uh, tick us below zero. Uh, for whatever reason, they can regime change Chile despite not occupying Chile or us. And so it is a little bit of a race against time. Um, 
we are recruiting up additional armies uh, to kind of fulfill uh, ideas. So the big one here is we are recruiting up this defensive army, which we're going to plan on putting up over here so that we can re-land with our landing army down here and still maybe hold the front at the same time or at least slow the U.S. down enough to be able to enforce on the USA while you know, pushing the primary war goal of La Paz, uh, which will allow us to get in here. And so it is a little bit tense. We might conscript up a little bit more. We're going to be probably slowing down the speed a little bit um, and trying to micro this out because the, the lack of UK helping us is actually just tremendously, like, painful. Although maybe the UK Navy will be kind of helping us out here. We do see, you know, that's not our Navy. That's the UK Navy. And so maybe this is going to be a substantive enough thing to cut off the supplies from the US over here. Something like this? I don't really know. Yeah, it's not looking very good. One problem... Oh, they're moving. Uh, so one problem we had been having, or what, that we were going to about to have, was that the U.S. was parking a bigger navy off the coast of Peru, Bolivia, than the U.K. was, uh, in which case we would not be able to land. However, now they've moved off of it, and so hopefully we can get the land again. We can get ticked below zero. They cannot. Good old asymmetry here. Uh, but hopefully, we're just hoping that the U.K. catches these fronts, uh, because this is kind of the only way anything useful happens, is if the U.K. somehow manages to catch this front, we are moving our guy back. Oh, maybe we shouldn't move the guy back, actually. I think he just doesn't get there in time. Three weeks to get to the landing. I mean, we definitely really want to... Oh, this is so tough. <sighs> okay. Okay, so I think we got this maybe locked up. They kind of pulled off of a front, which allowed us to push. Our naval landing failed, but our push is succeeding. Uh, and now uh, it looks like... Oh, man. Everything's gone to spaghetti mess, actually. The fronts shifting and changing just made everything unassigned, which is going to work out for us because we as a player can reassign uh, at a much better rate. Uh, and we do not really care about the war reps, but we kind of really do care about conquering California. We're moving more troops up here. What's this about? Oh my god nonsense uh so uh you know this uh little two stack the little two stack that could has been at the very least slowing down uh the usa this entire time which has been allowing us to tick them uh as far as california goes uh but with this we should be getting an enforcement on peru bolivia in the near future and then maybe 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 getting california slash war reps hopefully both Hopefully, at least California, at least. We enforce on Peru, Bolivia, and it doesn't look like we're going to be able to um, make any sort of progress against the USA. And we are ticking out as it is at minus five a tick, roughly speaking. But what we can get is we can get Cali, which is going to be nice. We don't really care about offering up regime change in, uh, in Chile. This is not meaningful to us. So we're going to propose this deal, get ourselves a little bit of Cali, uh, you know, Brazilian Cali, which, of course, gold fields and also gold mines. We will be kind of uh, really cranking out administration uh, in particular so we can integrate everything. We do not have these integrations already going, uh, but we're probably going to start incorporating Cali because uh, we know that uh, the population here is not going to be too, too high, uh, but it is going to grow, grow, grow uh, as soon as it's not isolated. Ugh. Oh, wait. Why are you isolated, my guy? I guess it just needs to think. But that was a productive war. And now we have a nice little Brazil off over the front of South America. We also uh, already started incorporating Antofagosta uh, because this is where the really good company's at. And we will also put in the sulfur mines, put them on auto expand and get them going because this is going to be in particular the place that we need the sulfur mines up to level 10 in order to use the company. And there's 10 gold mines anyways. And so here will be a nice place to build. Just to be clear, this this is the company we're talking about, which gives us a railways, uh, sulfur, and infrastructure. Uh, it's really, really nice. Uh, having throughput on railways and also construction speed on railways is really nice. They don't have any throughput normally, so when you don't have any throughput on something, the throughput on it is a very, very valuable, which is why we're building up here and incorporating it, because we have to get, uh, you know, sulfur mine up to level 10, as well as get a, uh, you know, have it be incorporated. If I'm not mistaken, these are the requirements. Is incorporated state and sulfur mine, ooh, only level five so that's good to know uh we only have to get it up to level five over the course of the next five years as it incorporates i just wanted to take a look through some of the peru bolivian territory to really emphasize how good it is um just for any run taking peru bolivia is extremely strong on top of the company that we just showed um we're gonna have a ton of rubber uh there's gonna be rubber dis rubber discoverables it's roughly it's not a lot of infamy to 
you know, take it and annex it, especially if you start out with Bolivia and only pay the infamy uh, for that. We have here, you know, a bunch of gold mines already. Uh, nearly mappy state. We don't have coal, but on top of that, it has gold in Lima. Uh, Lima also has a fairly nice company. Again, rubber. Rubber's also increasingly important as we, uh, you know, the metagame, I think, shifts towards the tools, uh, the late game tools PM just being so incredibly good The that consumes rubber. I think rubber's going to be a much more important resource. Ika has a ton of iron. You'll notice overall there's a ton of sulfur, sulfur and iron here. Um, you know, coal is a bit of a problem for us in South America as a whole, and it's not, you know, it's still a problem here. We have more gold here, um, and it ends up being quite a lot of gold mines uh, in addition to all this stuff, but also we have a ton of arable land, and this arable land can do dyes, and a lot of these places will have rice farms, which are just super overtuned. Um, they are very extremely slot efficient. We'll just throw in one right now. They are very slot efficient because they have double the normal employment. They have basically double the outputs, double the inputs, but they don't have double. They do not have a double the construction costs. And so rice is incredibly nice. Uh, we have been building out rice a little bit here and there in these places. We've been doing it manually, not having an auto expand, but an auto expand wouldn't be terrible. We'll just put in some more here because it's extremely efficient. And when you decrease the price of grain uh it is going to be pretty good for you know increasing the sol of the lower uh rung props which is something we will kind of start turning our heads towards a little bit um the grain is really really expensive the clothing is really expensive and so this means we probably have opportunities to build really profitable clothing we haven't been building much of it we've just been building the wood and exporting the wood and so we might uh you know make that little bit of a transition but what we might do first is we might build a little bit of furniture uh or focus furniture a little bit more and the reason behind this being uh we are producing a ton of wood and hardwood and so uh, we will get some nice local price effects, uh, especially in places where we're producing hardwood. And so, you know, coming in here and putting auto expand on furniture is maybe going to re be reasonable because we get really nice prices and we should have good margins. While this has been happening, we did demarginalize the trade unionist, which is going to be pretty nice. Uh, we could keep this bolster in. We could also maybe rake it back and use it to make a little bit more money. I think we're going to keep it in for now uh, because we are going to be using these guys to pass laws. But we are now getting 10% manufacturing industries throughput which is a pretty good inflection point for you know starting to switch to some of these consumer goods uh, because they will be a little bit more pop efficient and I believe we are starting to run out of peasants in a general sense um, well we're kind of doing okay on peasants but some of this will be in uh, you know Peru Bolivia where we can't really build yet because we have pretty significant construction malices notably we are uh, violent suppressing here in Antofagasta where we are planning on you know building through the malice uh, building out these uh, gold mines through the malice. I think we're going to put, uh, yeah, we already have a railway coming in. We're going to put another railway down and then we're going to put in all the gold mines kind of through the, actually, no, not all the gold mines. The real problem here is uh, we have actually very, very big population problems here. And so we would love to get a lot more pops here, uh, but we have a very significant malice here from Turmoil Extreme. And so this is not going to be quite, we're not gonna be quite getting it in as fast as we would like. Uh, but once we get rid of this malice, it will probably slap down a greener grass campaigns decree and look to get pump this place up a little bit uh, because the gold mines do need people in order to work. They can't work themselves. Um, speaking of, we have a ton of gold mines just like to take a look we have 36 gold mines currently um you know we can build up to around 50 uh, in terms of peru bolivia and then there's i think a 12 gold mines in california uh eventually we are not building them yet but we will like to once you know the turmoil comes down notably this corporation's a lot longer so it's going to take us a while to get the turmoil down uh, but this is a huge chunk of our economy if we take a look we have a national income of 370k uh we didn't check this beforehand but a full third of our income is coming from minting part of this is off the back of us just having a lot of gold mines part of it is just the natural minting you get from gdp which is uh, roughly a third of this is coming from this but we're also have the company slotted in and so you know things are looking pretty nice um i think what we're going to do is as soon as fractional distillation finishes we're actually going to stop uh researching uh mechanized workshops ourselves in fact we could just wait a week uh and instead what we're going to do instead what we are going to do it says wait seven days oh we get a lot unlucky tick it's going to say wait zero days. No, 
nope, it's still seven. But once we do this, we are just gonna start in on rubber mastication instead. Uh, and we will let mechanized workshops, uh, the progress eventually nat spread to us. Uh, we, there are only two techs we haven't researched. Hopefully we natural spread mechanized workshop instead of, uh, you know, the other one. But this will give us a leg up. Yes, big nice. It's a, on mechanized workshops. This will give us a little bit of a leg up on getting rubber mastication just a little bit faster because we really want to get in on vulcanization. That's going to be super, super nice, especially for us because we have so much rubber available and we can get started on, you know, some of the unique journal entries that we have uh, for, let's see, does it show us that yet, them yet? No, it doesn't. But we can change this land. We can rebuild him. We can fix him, she said. Uh, what it is is uh, we have minus 30% state construction efficiency and infra. Uh, we can exploit the Amazon rail rainforest and eventually get this down to 10%, which makes all of this land way nicer. And it all starts, it all starts with rubber. And so this is why we're going to be pushing that a little bit faster and why we are going to be foregoing the otherwise extraordinarily good steel frame buildings. We could have prioritized this instead, uh, but uh, we will just let uh, some of these natural spread to us and prob probably come back to steel frame after we get vulcanization something like this also notable on mechanized workshops this does kind of give us the the better pms for the consumer goods we are wanting to start splashing into uh our construction a little bit more anyways and so this is going to be really really nice uh this is going to produce a lot more furniture this is going to produce a lot more clothes and these are the things that are expensive in our market right it's not uh it's the basic stuff that is expensive for us and so this is going to be extraordinarily efficient once we get mechanized workshops so we'll probably put some in the back of the queue for when mechanized workshops uh, continues or finishes and that's spreading to us rather but i think we're going to conclude the episode here in this episode we had pedro the second abdicate to isabel uh she is an enlightened royalist but this doesn't do very much for us unless we can figure out a way to uh, well this is pretty nice having a market liberal industrialist uh after her but uh unless we can figure out a way to make her an ig leader which i'm not aware of a way currently um other than going like some banana presidential republic i think this works i mean maybe we could do this but that's like feels super not on theme um for you know kind of the enlightened royalists going the banana republic and so um we might just uh you know look longingly at the enlightened royalist but not touch uh i'm not sure but as she has gotten into power and we also had a pretty a pretty nasty war with the usa uh over the annexation of peru bolivia which is a huge boon a huge feather in our cap you can see that's our gdp kick up um you know that's our pop kick up and we are going to be you know kind of popping off to some degree here uh following the back of that we do have a lot of uh radicalism but uh you know it do be like that sometimes and so hopefully off the back after census suffrage uh we will be able to do something else for the trade unionists and get this workforce ratio um we are continuing to expand out uh you know wood everywhere uh just as kind of, kind of what we've been doing we have it on auto expand it's very very fruitful and the wood's not even cheap this isn't even minus 75 uh or actually is the market price yeah the russian market it's not even minus 75 in the russian market this is still expensive we're exporting these uh it's a wild wildly efficient pm and so this is super super good feeling for us that we are able to make such good use of the wood we do we are eating a construction malice you know uh from here okay but we're overcoming that to some degree with our you know uh the uh company construction bonus anyways hope you enjoyed feel free to like comment subscribe do the youtube algorithm thing and have a good day